Just wanted to give a quick update about what's going on, some upcoming projects. So uh, shortly before Christmas, I acquired this bad boy. I have long since wanted a Cobra Night Raven. I had one when I was uh, seven when it first came out. No idea what happened to my original one, but I found one mostly complete and in excellent condition. Definitely has been loved. Looks like it's been sitting on a shelf. So I look forward to cleaning it up. Uh, putting some brand new toy hex stickers on there. It came without stickers. It did come with um, a pilot and it came with almost all of its missiles, but no stickers. So I'm looking forward to cleaning that up and adding that to my Joe collection. Uh, I've been wanting one of these again for a while. Uh, this is the Kenner Real Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Uh, Walmart exclusively had a reissue of the figures that kind of reignited my imagination and I found one of these uh, pretty well taken care of except for some glue, the yellowing, some markers, definitely some dirt, uh, things of that nature that we'll have to get rid of and definitely have to get some spare parts going on there. But I'm really looking forward to updating this and keeping you guys in the loop on that. It is getting to be colder so my normal hydrogen peroxide method of cleaning this stuff up might have to be put on hold till spring because it is freezing outside. That will make things a little bit more difficult, but I am looking forward to getting these things cleaned up and showing them off to you here on YouTube or on Instagram. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted a video, mostly because of the holiday season. So anywho, what I thought I would do today is take a look at this Hogwarts Express uh, Lego set. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I got this several months ago. Um, it is a set that is not motorized. It re requires complete kid power to push and pull. It also does not come with track. I was wondering how could I motorize this set and one of the challenges is um, the scale of the of the engine doesn't really lend itself whoops doesn't really lend itself to adapting it to um, any kind of motorization that i know of um, i'm sure there are hacks out there but you'd have to take the motor or the engine completely apart um, it might even affect um, the the piston it has a faux piston that way when you chug it back and forth it looks like the piston is actually making the entire train move. So I was sitting there and thinking and thinking and thinking. And I was just I just couldn't wrap my head about motorizing the engine until I took a look at the coal car. The size of the coal car almost exactly mirrors the size of the 9 volt motor for this set that I've had since I was 10. This set came out in about 1990. It's a 9 volt uh, system that is no longer made and unfortunately I don't have the um, too much left of the set. The box is completely falling apart. All I really have left is the engine which is not the same style that's on the photo. Um, it came with instructions on how to redo it um, to a smaller size so I did that. I have a few other insulary pieces and the 9 volt track but what I like to do in today's video is I like to try to take the motor and I like to try to take the motor out of this, which is right here, and see if I can use it for a coal car. So as you can see, um, as I remove the rest of the model from the 9 volt motor, it's almost exactly the same width as the coal car. It might, I might have to make the coal car a little longer to accommodate the type of hookup that it has, but I'm gonna to have to take everything apart, but I'm fairly confident that even if I get rid of these pieces right here, that I can get that to pretty much look exactly like the stock coal car. Okay, so one of the first differences between the trains of this, of the 90s era and today is back then they used magnets, and I know that they still used magnets up until recently these were open magnets more magnets have been completely covered in plastic but this particular model for the hogwarts express uses the technic uh, studs and a tab with a hole in it so the unfortunate thing is is that there is a slight height difference there that there will be some um, should i say reach problems potentially we're basically going to just cut, try and copy this by removing the bottom and just putting it on here and see if that works. All right, so I found a two by six using the engine from the previous set, and I'm just gonna build off of that. 
All right, so, so far, not too bad. I still have to raise. I have to find more one by sixes. All right, so let's get it all hooked up. Okay, so as you can see, from like a height standpoint, still pretty level. Still looks somewhat akin to the original design. Doesn't intrude on it too much. One of the things when I get it on the track and power it up, what I want to see is, you know, now this is the driving motor, how these uh, flexible hitches react to the force being back here rather than being push or being. Essentially, this is now pushing and pulling the train at the same time as opposed to just pulling it. So I'm going to get some track out, uh, get the 9 volt power supply hooked up and see how that works. So if anybody is unfamiliar with 9 volt setups or actually electrifying rails because they really don't do that too much anymore. This is what Lego did back in the 90s is they took their track. This is where our standard track comes from now. And it has metal overlay over it that carries the current. One of the big problems with this is that over time they can oxidize. So here's a relatively new track that I got a few years ago. You can see it's a nice bright gray. Um, but on, over here is one of my original track pieces with the original set. It has grayed over time. And one of the big problems with metal track, whether it's your HO gauge, uh, like regular model trains or like this, these can oxidize over time. So they do require some upkeep because that does interfere with the contact that the motor, which is right here, which has metal wheels, makes. So it's kind of like a battery. You know, if you have a corroded uh, contact point, you're not going to get voltage. So to get voltage to the track, Lego had these two specialized bricks made that um, closes the circuit and then this is what takes electricity from the regulator to this brick, the special brick, to the track, which then travels up the track into the metal wheels of the motor. Those special bricks are connected to a speed regulator that Lego conveniently made look just like any other Lego. Um, and this is what you do to regulate speed. So turning right makes it go forward, turning left makes it go backward. You did, it, you did have to have specialized pieces to get this done. So you had a specialized Lego brick with a wire to the uh, power connectors and you had to have, you're limited by how far away you were from an outlet. So unlike the power sources of today that rely on Bluetooth and battery power, and you can run these things pretty much anywhere from anywhere, uh, you really were limited by how you close you were to an outlet. So let's just see how this thing runs. I did set up on my workbench a bit a straight track and uh, let's see how it goes back and forth and let's see how this motor can handle the weight of this train. So another thing we need to test then is to see how this does on curves because again, all the force being on this one point, I don't know how when this thing goes around a curve, how that's gonna look, how that's gonna happen. I don't know what kind of failure we can expect and I have very limited space on my workbench. So we're gonna have to um, probably take this to a floor or some other location to make sure that this works. But so far, so good. That's how I chose to motorize my Hogwarts Lego train. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it using the more modern Bluetooth motors, but I just like the nine volt setup. Uh, number one, you have constant and consistent power. Uh, in my experience with the new motors using the six 1.5 AA batteries, within five, 10 minutes, they lose most of their power. For the nine volt system, you have consistent power throughout the entire run of the train. So the big cons are, you do have limited capacity in terms of how far away from an outlet you are determines where you can set up the set. 
Um, there is upkeep with the metal tracks. You do have to keep them relatively clean. Not every single run, but every once in a while they do require maintenance to keep clean to keep the contacts as conductive as possible. But other than that, I really hope you enjoyed my video. Um, if you would really be so gracious as to give me a like, share, subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video.